Now let's take a look at the budgeting side of LMN. LMN starts with a budget. In fact, you need a budget before you can even begin to build an estimate. The reason we did this is because we need to know that we're making money. What's the point of estimating random labor hours and materials and costs if we don't really know that the price that we're going to charge is enough to cover our costs, to cover our company's overhead, and to make the profit that we want to make before the end of the year? Starting your year without a budget is like starting a job without an estimate. If you have no idea what you need to do to make a profit, then there's simply no way you can know that you're going to make a profit. You can put your head down and work hard, but that doesn't work for a lot of landscape companies. In fact, it doesn't work for any small businesses in general. The budget will help give you clear sales goals and clear cost recovery plan to make sure that you know, I need to sell this much work, and this is what I've got to do to work, this is my company's overhead, and if I can make this happen, this is how much money I'm going to make. And then the budget will feed the estimating system the numbers it needs to make sure that every job covers its costs, its overhead, and the profit you want to earn. You can create a number of budgets in LMN. You don't have to have just one. One is what you'd usually use to work off of, but for companies who are larger and want to break up their budgets by construction, maintenance, and snow, you can do that. You may also decide to have like a regular budget, an aggressive budget that might plan on really beating your sales goals, and then maybe a much more pessimistic budget in the case things like the economy don't go so well. Inside each budget, you start with a name, year, and budget name. The first thing you want to do is plan your sales goals. Sales goals help us establish a sales goal for the year. In fact, when we're budgeting, we're always doing everything where we'd like to be at the end of the year. The goal is to start the year that you're currently using with your budget and to create a plan for where you want to be at the end of the year. So my sales goals here would be where I'd want to finish up at the end of the year. If you're budgeting for the first time, there's help videos to walk you through every single step of every budget we're creating. The next budget across is the field labor. Once you know your sales goal, you should be able to predictably guesstimate how much labor you're going to need to accomplish that goal. Down here, I've got my foreman, my laborers, my lead hands, the number of hours they work, the hourly rates on average that I pay each employee, and then it gives me a total budgeted wage. And then up here shows me how much my sales goal I'm going to spend on field wages. It's a really important ratio to know because it tells you your productivity. The less sales you spend on wages, the more productive your crews are. You can click the compare button and enter in your mix of work by sales, and it'll show you, based on industry studies, roughly where your labor ratio should be. You'll also get a low ratio where profitable companies sit and a high ratio where not so profitable companies sit. Then we work through the equipment budget to make sure you're recovering the cost of your equipment. The old school wisdom of this industry was always get your equipment, get it paid off, and then you don't owe anybody anything, and you can start making profits. The real world results of that school has often led companies to come up way short when it comes to recovering equipment costs. Because you don't have payments, it doesn't show up on accounting. Because it doesn't show up on accounting, it doesn't get estimated. And when the equipment stops getting estimated, the value of your equipment is decreasing, and your customers aren't paying anything for that value. In fact, you're giving away your equipment to people that you barely even know for free. Our budget makes sure that every piece of equipment starts with a replacement cost, a year's life, and what it's worth at the end of the year's life, so that you can budget a monthly amount, which will get recovered when you estimate, to recover the cost of your equipment as it depreciates throughout the life of your equipment. Vehicles like trucks and dump trucks, skid steers, mini X's, even mowers and trailers can be budgeted for here so that you make sure you recover all the costs of your equipment. The materials section helps us build a budget for the materials. And the ratio of what you spend on your sales to materials is pretty consistent. As you do more work, you're going to need more materials, and vice versa. Looking back at your accounting history can show you where your material ratios typically sit, and then you can easily budget for future sales increases or decreases by making sure your ratio stays fairly consistent. Subcontracting will help you build a subcontracting budget in case you use subcontractors to do some or a lot of your work. Finally, we get to your overhead budget. Now the overhead budget is the critical budget. This is what makes sure that all your non-estimatable expenses gets recovered. You've got expenses like cell phones, 
subscriptions, association dues, accounting fees, computers, printers, uniforms, all kinds of expenses that don't get estimated into a job. And if you're pricing by guess, you don't know if these costs are getting recovered. And then it's really difficult to invest in any of these overhead things when you're not sure you have the confidence that your prices are enough to afford them. The element budget tries to do what QuickBooks never could do, which is really help owners understand what their overhead is and how to recover it. Your goal when you go through your accounting is to pull out all the expenses that you know you don't estimate on jobs. Those are your overhead expenses and they go in here. You'd have expenses and you'd also have wages. Overhead wages are the salaries for all the people who work in the business, but whose time doesn't get estimated when we estimate work. Owners, mechanics, landscape designers, accountants, office managers are all examples of roles that are typically overhead expenses. When you've completed your overhead budget, you'll end up with a forecast profit and loss. If you're doing your budget towards the end of the next year, what you're going to end up with then is a forecast P&L or profit and loss statement that shows your sales, your expected costs, your expected overhead, and your expected profit. Now here's where you're going to want to pause and go back and massage your budget's numbers until you end up with a company scenario that nets you the net profit you want to earn as a business. Again, there's plenty of videos throughout the LMN budgeting process to make sure we describe what goes in what budget along every step of the way so that you've got confidence when you're looking at your P&L here that you've accounted for everything correctly. Once you know you've got a healthy net profit, you're ready to move on to the last step, which is overhead recovery. Overhead recovery is what's going to take care of the math to make sure that when you estimate work, we make sure we recover the overhead that's in your company in every single one of your jobs. You can choose of several different methods. There's a single overhead recovery method, which will give you a single percentage. There's a field labor hour overhead recovery method, which will calculate an overhead recovery amount per hour worked on the job. And then there's the multiple overhead recovery system, popularized by consultants such as Charles Vanderkoy, which will have a weighted overhead recovery factor higher on labor, lower on equipment, lower still on materials, and lowest on subcontracting. This type of system is a little more complicated on pen and paper. Software makes it easy, and it has some strong advantages. Both the Moores and the field labor recovery system recover more overhead on labor, which makes jobs that take a lot of labor more expensive. In the real world, this is a good thing. Jobs that need more labor take up more of our most precious resource, which is skilled labor and they should therefore pay the highest share of the costs. Any one of us can order materials or order equipment fairly easily. Managing $10,000 worth of materials is a couple of phone calls. Managing $10,000 worth of labor is getting up every morning at 5 in the morning and telling guys in the yards what to do. Therefore, we want jobs that use a lot more labor to pay a higher share of the overhead costs, and these two methods will help you do so without you really even having to think about it. That's a quick overview of the budgeting tool. If anyone wants more information on specifically how to budget, and what to budget, you want to learn how to put one together for your company, then check out LMN's virtual workshop also here on our YouTube channel. And we'll go through an in-depth step-by-step -step process to building your company's budget one section at a time. For more information about LMN, check out our website at www.golmn.com.